So, Phil Newman, it's so great to have you uh, on this interview. I'm, uh, I'm honored and I'm very grateful for the work you're doing in the longevity field. Oh, Jim, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm really looking forward to the show in, uh, in October. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, RadFest. So, uh, you're coming to RadFest. We're so happy for that. This is the first time to uh, be at RadFest, correct? It'll be my first time, yeah, and uh, very excited to be getting back into real events in real life. I think the whole sector needs it, whether you're in longevity or any other industry sector, but I think ours is definitely benefiting from getting those minds back together in the same room again. Exactly. That's so, that's so vital to do. So Phil is the editor-in-chief of Longevity Technology and founder of First Longevity, a digital investment platform for international investors and longevity startups. In his career, he has held C-level management positions, uh, applying his marketing and business development expertise into longevity, uh, LOT, AI, medical devices, biopharma, 3D manufacturing, smart grid, and sustainability. You're a busy guy. <laughs> yeah, well, I was in a lot of sectors and, uh, for a lot of my career. And interestingly, I kind of missed fintech completely. And of course, the world is uh, so dominated by fintech. I was too busy doing other things, you know. So, uh, yeah, interesting that I'm now running a fintech. Yeah. So now what do you think uh, are some of the most promising? I know I know you told me earlier that uh, some of these companies now, of course, are kind of keeping a, a little bit more a lower profile on what they're doing. And maybe at RadFest, we're going to hear a lot more. I, I, I know because there's going to be a lot more come forth just in this next five months. So that's exciting. But what do you think are some of the most promising longevity uh, protocols or uh, innovations that are happening now? Well, I mean, no, nobody can ignore what's happening within cellular reprogramming. Uh, Altos Labs was announced, um, and, and obviously Jeff Bezos is rumored to be behind that, whether he is or not. Obviously, there's a big slug of cash going into really building out a very, very talented group of people. Uh, I hope that they are open in the way that we want them to be. It's going to be obviously highly commercially geared, as others are in the sector. But I would, I'd, I'm hoping that they're not going to be opaque like Calico, you know. And I'm very excited about uh, cellular reengineering because uh, or cellular reprogramming. Some of the terminology is not fully uh, baked into the industry yet. But obviously, this this really is a, a goldmine for longevity. If you if you can um, support not just one disease but multiple diseases through reprogramming. Uh, in the body and you can control that reprogramming so that you're not taking cells back to a, uh, a pluripotent state which means obviously they're, they're they're young and unable to to be formed into anything specifically unless you engineer them that way it's just turning back those cells in their current state to a point where they are in a younger state is wow. is fascinating right. But right. There's, there's right. Also, yeah there's a there's a long way to go for the sector and it's really really early stage but that's a very exciting part of it i think that really as we go forward um over the next uh decades we're going to see a lot of navigation of um some technology is going to advance faster than others so for example you know we're now addressing sarcopenia which is one of those things which was all about frailty and uh, people not being able to ultimately get out of a chair or get out of a bed you know, that's already working at the moment, but we haven't cracked Alzheimer's. So, you know, of course, all these things are going to go at different paces. And I'd love to think that they all move forward at the same time, but I suspect that they potentially won't unless we can get something like cellular rejuvenation coming in and, and really helping us in a in a holistic, holistic way within our bodies, which I think we can do. And blood plasma is another another technology that's doing that at the moment. So there's lots of hope out there. And like you said, uh, all these different fields now that are have these different innovations they're working on. Uh, it's, it's, it's real. I mean, I, I remember when I first started back in 1971 talking about longevity, none of this science was there. So I'm so happy today to see all this. And again, thank you for helping spread the news about it. Well, it's, it's my pleasure. And of course, you know, I'm looking at it with a um, slightly dispassionate eye as well, because really I'm looking at it and understanding as a marketing person, you know, is the market formed yet? You know, is the market going to attract investors? And is the market actually going to happen? And I think it's fascinating to see what, and in the last three years that I've been highly active in the space, I, I have seen the needle move, you know, and if it's moving at this pace now, well, you know, within 10, 15 years from now, I don't think any of us are going to really recognize where we are. I, just, I agree 100%. I'm very excited about the TAME trial because I think that that's really, it's funded as far as I'm aware now, you know, it's moving in the right direction. Uh, it's in that position now where we can, we can study aging within a different clinical structure 
And I hope, and I know the FDA are watching this, and Nir Basel is, you know, very, uh, very active with, within both schools, and he's supporting his his program. And I, I think it's going to be fascinating to see how that works. We're going to have to wait for the results, but it's going to be very, very interesting for mankind to see how the uh, how metformin works across all those diseases of aging. I know you're going to be going to more detail at this at Radfest, and again, I'm so happy you're coming to Radfest, and I think you're probably bringing some of your colleagues too. I think you'll really, you'll really enjoy it. It's a, it's a celebration of life and along with the best science and, and age reversal and you know, anti-aging. But um, I think uh, what uh, do you feel uh, in your mind now uh, that you want to where you want to take longevity tech and what's your goal with longevity tech at this point? Well, I mean, we we put ourselves into the middle of the industry, in the middle of the ecosystem. And as we've done that as being a media platform, uh, I've had to understand how we can commercialize that and diversify. So the exciting things that we're working on at the moment, I think, really are uh, that we are growing our investment business. So from a let's sort of split our business into two, two domains, B2B and B2C. So, you know, we're seeing some super exciting businesses now. Um, over the last six months, we've been able to qualify under SEC to be able to broker relationships in the US between US investors and US startups, you know, which is a UK based company is a, is a big shift for us. And we're seeing very exciting companies coming through now that are normally at that sort of seed to series A stage. So we're helping those guys get funded. Uh, we're making a couple of announcements fairly soon about deals that we've done, which are, which are very big and uh, very big for the sector. So we see that as very much growing now um, uh, as a growing part of our business. So supporting that is our market intelligence unit. So we've got a great team of researchers that are looking at both the science and the commercial traction of businesses within the longevity sector. So we will be tracking by the end of April uh, 500 companies uh, that are in the longevity space. So we'll be doing a lot of horizon scanning then, looking for new scientific gaps in the marketplace that need to be filled by startups, but also where there's an opportunity for scaling up certain businesses. So, so those are two really important parts of the, the B2B side of our business. And of course, longevity.technology is the, is the media platform that supports that. Um, but actually, we've just recently announced and launched our consumer marketplace. Um, so we've got content that's uh, now very much focused on the on the layperson, giving them guidance about longevity. And we see using our brand as a as a, a curator of what's happening in the space. So we see ourselves really moving now from from analyzing the news to being actually helping people with some of the uh, guidance that they need in terms of their own longevity interventions and likewise how they measure their uh, their progress. So we see that as a very important role for ourselves in the middle of the ecosystem. So we're going to we're going to be you're going to see us developing our longevity marketplace this year. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful, and I'm sure everybody listening for this that's a real, you know, longevity enthusiast is grateful for the support you're giving all these companies, you know, both investment-wise and, and uh, spreading the information and getting support for them. That's, that's great work. Well, I mean, it's, it's a pleasure to do it, obviously, and, you know, it's got a lot easier than when we started. You know, we, we, we were wondering whether we'd get one article a day, but, I mean, we have four or five articles a day now, and I, I, I don't see that stopping. So the acceleration is happening, you know, and that's it's fascinating to watch it, you know, because we're, we're in the middle of it sometimes, you know, but it's, uh, actually I'm amazed with some of the stuff that we get through our, uh, our news desk every day. Right, right. Well, I ask myself this next question all the time because, you know, uh, we started RadFest for the purpose of uh, not only galvanizing the radical life extension community, but also to spread the news everywhere, you know, and then move into getting a, a mainstream uh, trend of thought. So what's your uh, analogy? What do you think, when do you think that super longevity will become what we call mainstream? Well, I guess it's two things really, James. It's your definition of super longevity. So I think that really what you're saying is, uh, when can we hit longevity escape velocity? Um, I can't answer that question at the moment. Um, I can look at the industry and I can kind of go, well, there's some super exciting things that are happening, um, but you have to look at where they, these, these technologies are in the clinical pipeline process. And obviously, if they're going to go mainstream, they've got to be FDA approved, they've got to be safe, they've got to be efficacious, and they've got to be in the market, and they've got to be affordable, right? So there's a lot of things that need to be done for those therapies to get into marketplace uh, and be in that state where people can benefit from them. So 
I would say, you know, knowing the clinical pipeline process and where we are with biotech funding at the moment and those types of things, I would say a minimum of 10 years, probably 15 years. That's the way I feel about it now. But in terms of the consciousness of longevity in the marketplace now, uh, I mean, it's, I don't know, you must have seen it, Jim. It's, it's kind of everywhere. You see it everywhere. People are talking about longevity. You pick up your somebody supplement, you read longevity, you know, you pick, you're, in it, you're going through, your, your favorite magazine online and you've got you know articles coming in about longevity it's happening at the moment and i see that really the, the the acceleration of the wellness sector that we all experienced over the last 10 to 15 years they are now that sector is now looking for the next big thing and, and absolutely longevity is going to be it you know and uh, there's some things that are happening this year that i can't talk about that i know are going to happen this year and i'm very excited about them and i i do believe this year will be a very nice feeder for next year where longevity will become something that's very, very much in the public consciousness. Okay, so now, now you have uh, stimulated my uh, interest here in a deeper way, things you can't talk about. I hope you'll be able to talk about those at RadFest more. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Uh, I do, know, I, do know that, I know that I do know that one cat will be out of the bag by RadFest, that's for sure. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, so, um, how do you uh, how are you managing your own longevity? What do you what do you do for yourself? Uh, well, it's interesting when I when I read that article about uh, juvenescence um, in 2018, I was actually getting a train from uh, the south of Norway to the uh, north of Norway um, to cycle all the way back in a 24 hour bike ride bike race. And um, I did that. Um, it was above the Arctic Circle. So it was, it was a very interesting um, physical experience that I went through. But I actually um, kind of broke myself. I'd been doing quite a lot of endurance sports, you know, swimming the channel and things like that. And that was really the last event that I was actually physically able to do because um, I my body just kind of got fatigue. Uh, I didn't actually recover from that fatigue. And um, I still got it now, you know, three and a half years later. So I've spent a lot of time actually um, looking at my microbiome, my exercise regime, which is obviously very minimal at the moment, uh, what the supplements are that I'm taking, uh, what my lifestyle is, what my sleep patterns are. And I've become really the, uh, uh, the benefits, beneficiary of all the things that we write about. And it's, it's, it's not working fully yet, but I'm definitely a lot better than I was. So at the moment, you know, it's the basics, right? It's uh, it's sleep, um, you know, so I'm obsessed of getting eight hours sleep a night if I can do it. I don't know if you have a whoop band, but... Um, good for you. Sounds like you're doing a good job of your longevity. Uh, you're, you're a work in progress, like so many of us. Oh, yes, absolutely. And I guess the thing that I'm looking to do next, and I've just taken a couple of uh, epigenetic tests, um, I'm going to be moving into understanding... Number one, whether those two tests give me a similar uh, biological age, and obviously that's a whole new discussion point because you know, obviously, if, if my biological age is is set at I'm, I'm 54, let's hope I'm my biological age is younger. But of course, you know, the question is, is are certain organs in my body actually older than my biological age? So this whole question about uh, standards for biological age. Uh, measurement and tracking is going to be a very important part of our industry now. So we, we see right. diagnostics as being a huge sector. In fact, we've just done a, a big report on diagnostics and um, we see that as a big growth area in investment, but also we all need it. We all need to know what our starting point is and what our improvement points are. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, beautiful. So, um, okay, so do you do any of the, uh, uh, I'll say what's known as the possible uh, age, uh, you know, more, I'll say, slowing down aging uh, protocols or some of the, uh, I'll say, advanced protocols that they're recommending now in the uh, age reversal level, like uh, Synalytics or NAD or Rapamycin, any of these things, are any of these things of interest to you or do, are you familiar with them? Yeah, they are of interest to me. Um, you know, rapamycin is one of those that um, I find a little scary, if I'm honest with you, because obviously it is a therapeutic. It's an organ rejection therapeutic. Um, but of course, it does work against the immune system. You know, I, I have chronic fatigue, which means that my immune system is a bit messed up. Um, so I do see that under the right guidance um, that rapamycin could be something that I would be interested in. Um, metformin is one of those other drugs that we know is of a great interest across the sector, but it can be contraindicative against other other aspects. Uh, Berberine is a, a good good substitute. 
yeah and and the thing is is that really it demonstrates this conversation demonstrates that um the clinical layer within the whole industry isn't mature and doesn't exist fully at this stage and we see ourselves as being part of the ecosystem in really bringing up the education points associated with uh, clinical training uh, so that really uh, people understand that aging is a is a very valid and important part of every clinician's education and um, really in, in, in terms of them being able to become specialists in in aging and to be able in, in specific markets, and of course the US is going to be a huge market for that, to actually commercialize that for their own benefit. You know, so we see the, the clinical layer that we all need that guidance for um, is going to be something that's going to be a huge growth sector. And we, we're going to be part of that over the next few years. Yeah, yeah, tremendous. So I think that um, very excited about learning more about this at, at the show. And of course, I think that the whole sector really will benefit from the, the work that's going on now in, in putting together educational training programs and being able to help people qualify to be able to then become experts in in diagnostics as well as interventions for longevity. Right, right. Well, is there anything else that uh, we didn't cover that you'd like to add before we close this interview? Well, no, Jim, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm in business like everybody else, you know, so we're fundraising at the moment. Uh, so we're raising our uh, seed round at this stage. So we're raising uh, $3.2 million. Uh, the round's going well, but it's not closed out yet. So, um, yeah, we're keen to get that closed out by the summer because we've got a lot of work to do and I need to build out our headcount. So our plans really is, you know, we're, we're a UK based business, but we're very mid-Atlantic, you know, 50% of our traffic is from the US anyway. So, so really our expansion plans are now to move into the US uh, recruit talent in the U.S. Oh, market and, and help grow that market. Hey, I'm, I'm so enjoying this interview. And, and again, uh, yeah, you've got so much powerful information to share. I'm, I'm excited to hear what you've got for RadFest. And we're very excited to have you there. So well, thank you again. Uh, yeah, Jim, I can't, I can't wait for October. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, fantastic. We're going we're gonna to have an exciting exchange of information and, and uh, powerful inspiration, I feel. So that, that's going to be great together. Can't wait to meet you in person. Keep taking good care, stay alive, and we'll see you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. Thank you very much.